introduce Professor Lothar Goethe here uh, in our basic notion seminar. He will be speaking today to us about tropical geometry. Lothar, you have the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I'm talking about, uh, uh, now it doesn't do it. So I already have technical problems. Okay, we, uh, I want to talk about tropical geometry. So this is sometimes called the combinatorial shadow of algebraic geometry. So in algebraic geometry, we study algebra varieties, which uh, in the simplest manifestations, manifestations are just zero sets of polynomials, f, one, f of x1 to xn in n variables on c to the n. Um, and we want to replace them by a simpler combinatorial object in uh, topical geometry. So, um, so, <clears throat> The hope, so this should be done in such a way that the combinatorial properties of these tropical varieties reflect the geometric properties of the original varieties, algebraic varieties. And uh, then we will find that many results in algebraic geometry have counterparts in, in tropical geometry. And often we can solve uh, or try to solve problems in algebraic geometry by translating them into tropical geometry when they become basically problems of combinatorics and tr then try the corresponding combinatorial problem. So uh, <clears throat> let me briefly introduce, uh, well, if you want the history. So topical geometry originally comes from computer science. The kind of is uh, in honor of Imre Simon, which is a, uh, who is a Brazilian computer scientist who first studied uh, in computer science uh, the Max plus algebra which we will encounter in a moment, which is at the basis uh, of tropical geometry. Um, there are applications of tropical geometry in many fields. So I've been I'm interested in particular in algebraic geometry, for instance, innovative geometry of curves. It has applications in mirror symmetry between algebraic geometry and physics. It has other applications in physics. There are applications in economy, for instance, for the design of auctions. And there are also applications in biology, for instance, in uh, computational genetics. So I myself first learned uh, tropical geometry from the notes of Gartmann, which I have written down here. They are also at the references in the end. And I also consulted them for this talk. <coughs> there are also this Atom lectures, which I think currently are still going on and the corresponding uh, videos are online at the place I list here and also at the references in the end. So if one is interested in more detail and knowing more about applications and so on, one can look at these lecture series. And um, finally, there is, uh, for instance, this book by McLagan and Sturmfels uh, about uh, tropical geometry, okay, which uh, you know, the references are at the end of the notes. So let me now start. <coughs> Uh, with the subject. So, in, as I said, in algebraic geometry, we study algebraic varieties, which are zero sets of polynomials, actually common zero sets of several polynomials in several variables. So, x is the, zero, the common zero set of polynomials f1 to fk, where the fi are polynomials in n variables on cn, which we also just call an in algebraic geometry. So, explicitly, it's a set of all a1 to an in cn such that f1 of e1 to an is equal to fk and so on fk of f1 to n is equal to zero. <coughs> so this common zero set. Um, so for instance, if in a2 we take the zero set of just the polynomial x, this will give us a line. At least if you look at the real picture, it looks like a line. With the complex numbers, you know, c2 is actually like r4, and so it is a plane, but as algebra geometers, we think of, still of it, think of it as a line. And if we look instead at the compactification of projective space, it will actually be uh, a sphere. I mean, homeomorphic to a sphere. In the same way, we can look at the polynomial of degree three, for instance, this one, y squared minus x times x minus one times x plus one in the plane. So the real points look somewhat like this. So a circle and then this opened up circle going to infinity. If we again take uh, this over the complex numbers, this equation and uh, compactify in the projective plane, we get a torus like this as a zero. So these are some examples. 
Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> now we want to do algebraic geometry in a different way to do tropical geometry. So algebraic geometry is based on the algebra of polynomials. So basically polynomials means we, we add and we multiply. That's what polynomials do. So if you want to uh, change, uh, one way to change algebraic geometry is to change these standard basic operations. So we want to, what happens if we change of the rules of algebra? What happens if we change what we mean by addition and multiplications? Can we still do algebraic geometry? Okay, so what happens if we change the rules of algebra? So, um, okay, so I just review what I said. <coughs> um, <coughs> and so we can, we can do the following crazy definition. We look at the tropical semi-field, R bar, which is R union minus infinity, with the new addition, plus with a circle and the new multiplication, where we have defined the new sum, A plus B is the maximum of A and B, and the new product is the sum of A and B. Okay, so for instance, if we take five plus six, this is equal to six. If we take five times six, this is equal to 11. Okay, that seems uh, reasonably crazy, but, <clears throat> Strange enough, this gives us almost a field. So there's, a, so you can see this new addition, it's easy to see that this is, uh, both addition and multiplication now will be associative and commutative. When we can check directly here that the distributive law holds. For instance, if we take A plus B times C, in standard notation is the maximum of A plus A and B plus C, which obviously is the same as the maximum of A plus C and B plus C which according to our definition is A times C plus B times C. So the distributive law holds. We see that minus infinity is the neutral element of the new addition because the maximum of minus infinity and any number is that any number. Zero is the neutral element of the multiplication because uh, the new multiplication is the addition and zero is the neutral element of that. And minus A is the multiplicative inverse of any element in R. So that means any element in R bar without the neutral element of, of addition. So like in a field. So the only thing which is missing is that we don't have additive inverses. If you have an element A in R, it will not have an additive inverse. There will be no B in R bar such that the maximum of A and B is minus infinity because uh, our element A is already bigger than minus infinity. Okay, so we have, we have a field except for this one action, which doesn't hold. So we can see that it's, you know, it almost uh, seems we have a reasonable structure. <clears throat> and now we want to uh, define tropical uh, varieties as some kind of zero sets of tropical polynomials in Rn. So a tropical polynomial will be uh, a polynomial where we uh, replace a, our usual plus and times by the new plus and the new times. And we will have to also change what we mean by zero sets. We actually would not be interested in zero sets, but in something slightly different. So let me first define uh, these polynomials. So I write uh, for variable xi, I write xi to the m just for the i fold, you know, new product of, or for the m fold product of xi with itself. So in the standard notation, this is just m times xi. So this is xi to the m. If you have a multi-index i equal to i1 to n, and x is equal to uh, x1 to, this should be written in the standard, x1 to xn is the, all the variables, we write x to the i to be the product uh, x1 to the i1 times and so on xn to the i n which in standard notation is just i1 x1 plus and so on plus i n x n. So this is just the scalar product of the vector i, which is the multi-index times x, which is uh, the vector of coordinates. So x to the i is just i times x, the scalar product. And so <clears throat> now what is the tropical, if you write down something like sum i a i x i, this is supposed to be a function. So the tropical polynomial f times sum i a i x i, where the a i, the coefficients are elements in R bar, is the function f. And so the maximum, so in the standard notation, the maximum over all i, a i 
plus i times xi, so the scalar product from rn to r. So vector b equal to b1 to bn in rn is sent to the maximum over all i, ai plus i scalar product with b. So this is a function from rn to r. So in this notation, we will not write the terms where the coefficient ai is equal to minus infinity. So you know that's the <clears throat> like one wouldn't write the, co the terms where the coefficient is zero in the standard polynomial, but we certainly write the, the terms where the coefficient is zero because zero times xi is just xi. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at an example. We have this polynomial in one variable, minus two times x plus x plus one. So in standard notation, this is the maximum of one x and two x minus one. No? This uh, minus two times x squared is two x minus one. So I've here given you the graph of this function. You can see it's, uh, it will be equal to one if x is smaller than minus one, it will be equal to x if uh, x is between one and two, and it will be equal to two x minus two if x is bigger than two. So this is uh, an example of a tropical polynomial in one variable. So I just write this here again. <clears throat> uh, now you can see, I mean, from the definition, a tropical polynomial is piecewise linear. So one of the, if you have all these monomials, so the tropical monomials, one of the terms will give the maximum and that term is a linear function. So tropical polynomials are piecewise linear. The interesting set will somehow not be the zero set, but the corner locus, which where two uh, kind of regions where the polynomial is linear meet. Okay. So for instance, in our, so let me here yeah, first, uh, we have this, I write it again. So for the tropical polynomial F equals some I A I X I is equal to the maximum of all i, a i plus i times x from i n to r. The tropical hypersurface zf defined by f is a set of all b in i n such that the maximum, the maximum is the value of f of b, so the maximum of all monomials evaluated at b is uh, f of b, so that this maximum f of b is obtained by at least two of the uh, plus monomials. So there would be two, it would be at least two such multi indices i1 and i2, so that this uh, maximum of ai plus i times b is equal to the maximum of ai a, uh, i2 plus i2 times b uh, at b. Um, no, so that, let me say it again. <clears throat> so there would be at least two uh, such monomials where the maximum over all monomials is achieved by these two different monomials. So it's not enough that two monomials are equal but it should be that two of the monomials give us the maximum of all monomials, okay? So this is, um, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the corner locus, uh, the tropical hypersurface defined by F. So in particular, in our case, we have that if we look again at our polynomial, Z of minus two X times, minus two times X squared plus X plus one, uh, we see that uh, the locus where two linear pieces uh, come together are uh, the point one and the point two. So the tropical hypersurface in R defined by this polynomial is the set one, two. Okay. Obviously, the zero sets of tropical polynomials in one variable are maybe not so exciting, so we will now rather look at tropical plane curves. <coughs> so I'll give a few examples of tropical plane curves in R2. So in each, so in each sector, so I, I write them in the plane, in each sector I will also write which, mono, in which monomial achieves the maximum. For instance, we can look at the tropical line z of x plus y plus zero. So this is uh, in standard notation, the maximum of x and y and zero. So how does it look like? So of these three monomials, x, y, and zero, so when x and y are both negative, the maximum is achieved by zero. So in this region, the maximum is achieved by zero. When y is bigger than zero and bigger than x, the maximum is obtained by y, and here it is obtained by x. And so the tropical curve defined by this hypersurface is where two of these regions meet. For instance, 
the, the segment uh, where y is equal to zero and x is smaller than zero. So this part, then uh, this segment and finally also the locus, uh, the locus where x equal to y and both uh, x and y are bigger than zero or bigger equal to zero. So this is the topical curve and this is uh, uh, the corresponding function. We can also look at a more complicated case, a topical conic, so degree two curve. So x squared plus y squared plus three times x times y plus two y plus two x plus three. So in standard notation, it's the maximum of two x, two y, x plus y plus three, x plus two, y plus two and three. And in this case, we get this more complicated picture. So for instance, when y is bigger than two and y is bigger than x plus three, the maximum is obtained by two y. Here it's obtained by y plus two. When both x and y are small, the maximum is the constant three, which is this monomial. And so we get the plane is divided into these regions and the, the locus where two of the regions meet gives us uh, always, uh, this gives us the corresponding tropical curve, which looks like this. Okay, so this would be another such example. <clears throat> we can, uh, and then finally, uh, to just say uh, in general, uh, if we have, um, if you want to know what a tropical algebraic set or tropical variety uh, is in higher dimensional uh, uh, Rn, we just, so assume we have F1 to Fr some tropical polynomials, the tropical algebraic set defined by these tropical polynomials is just the intersection of the, uh, the corner of the hypersurfaces defined by each of them. Okay. I mean, I will not go into this in general. For the rest of the talk, I will specialize to plane tropical curves, which are kind of easier to, uh, to visualize and are also sufficiently complicated to, to study. And, and so these will be tropical hypersurfaces in R2, which are given as corner locus of tropical polynomials in two variables, x and y, of polynomials in two variables, x and y. So, okay, so this is the case of plane tropical curves. So I first give you a slightly wrong definition and then I will correct it. <clears throat> so, I mean, in, you know, you know the degree of polynomial sum uh, aij x to the i, y to the j is the maximum over all i plus j for uh, monomials which actually occur, so where the coefficient is not zero. So for a tropical polynomial, you would say the same. The degree of a tropical polynomial f is the sum, uh, so f equal to sum i j a i j x to the i y to the j is the maximum of the i plus j which occur. That means where the coefficient is not minus infinity. And the coefficient is allowed to be zero, however. So, if, so therefore a plane tropical curve of degree should be uh, the hypersurface defined by a tropical polynomial of degree d. Now, this doesn't quite work for us. We have to slightly change it. So I say that it, the tropical polynomial uh, f equal to sum ij, aij, x to the i, y to the j has degree d. If, if, as I said before, d is the maximum of the i plus j which occur in the polynomial. But I also require, require that the monomial x to the d occurs with some coefficient, y to the d occurs with some coefficient which is not minus infinity, and the x to the zero, y to the zero also occurs. Somehow the extreme values, uh, and the, the, the extreme powers should also occur. Okay, so, and then a plane tropical curve of degree d is uh, the hypersurface defined by such a tropical polynomial of degree d. So for instance, we had already the case of a line, which is a, a polynomial of the tropical of degree one, you know, x, y, and zero occur. X, you know, the coefficient of x to the zero, y to the zero is just this. So this looks like this. We can look at the, the we had this example of this conic, the corresponding tropical curve had this shape, where these are always unbounded edges. And then we had, uh, here we have written down without writing down the equation, the example of a, uh, a curve of degree three. So <clears throat> what you can see here, if you look at it and uh, is that, I mean, and if you ignore that I didn't draw it so well, that 
such a curve of degree d has always d unbounded edges, one in this direction, uh, minus one zero, one down, uh, zero minus one, and one diagonally up in the direction one one. And d of those where d is the degree. So here it's one in each of these directions, here it's two, and here it's three in each of these directions. Okay, so we observed that. We'll see in a moment why this is true and actually why it's almost true. It's not quite true in general, but almost. <coughs> and so actually now um, I want to describe the shape. So let me, so this was, so we see something about how they look like. And now we want to somehow, in some sense, prove that the tropical curves actually do look like that and uh, understand in general something about their shape. So this is in some sense the, the most difficult part of this talk where it requires the biggest concentration because I'm actually trying to prove something and you have to use your imagination and also uh, follow closely. Um, and we'll see whether it works. So, <clears throat> so our aim is to find out what a tropical curve of degree D looks like. So assume we have gamma is equal to the hypersurface defined by f, a plane tropical curve degree d, where f is this uh, tropical polynomial, which I write more in the standard notation, the maximum over a i times x, b i times y, plus c i, where a i and b i uh, uh, will be uh, some integers. No? These are, you know, in the standard notation, this is x to the a i, Time, so in the tropical notation this is x to the a i times y to the b i. And so a i and b i are non-negative integers whose sum is at most i plus j. And if, and if i plus j must occur. So this a i b i occurring, occurring here are distinct integer points. So points with integer coordinates in the triangle delta d. So the set of all a, b and r2 where a is non-negative, b is non-negative, and the sum of a and b is smaller or equal to d. Here I have uh, drawn down this uh, triangle for d equal to 2 together with its integer points. And we have required that <coughs> the a i b i, among those we have the point d0, so this ex the extreme, so the vertices of this triangle should also be among them. Okay. So now, <clears throat> how do we get an edge of the corresponding tropical curve? This occurs if uh, the, you know, this point uh, occurs at the point x, y in R2. If f of x, y, which is the maximum over all these monomials, is obtained by at least two of the monomials. So if there exists an x in R2 such that a i b i a i x plus b i y plus c i is equal to e j x plus b j y plus c j for some i different from j, then there will be a, a line segment in the uh, corresponding tropical curve. And if you think about it for a moment, you see that this line segment will be orthogonal to the line, uh, to the line connecting these two points, a i b i and a j b j because the, you know, the slope of these uh, things is that, and then the, the, where they meet is orthogonal to, to that. So then gamma will have a, an edge in the orthogonal to this line. So now we, so we, we take these lines between these. Uh, so we only now write down these EI, BI, where, which, where, where, which actually occur. Um, so we, we uh, which actually occur here, and we connect them by a line uh, if, uh, if we are in this situation that there is an x, y such that uh, uh, a i b i a i x plus b i y plus c i is equal to a j i b j x plus b j y plus c j is equal to the maximum of all of them. So if one thinks about this for a moment, this will give us a subdivision of our original triangle delta d. And we will find that among these vertices which occur here are also uh, this, the, the, the extreme points, because somehow as these are the extreme points, at some point they will become, uh, the corresponding monomial will become bigger than all the others. 
And so they will always occur in this thing, uh, you know, will always contribute to the maximum at some point, and this, they, they will therefore always uh, occur here. So these lines give a subdivision of delta D into polygons with integer vertices. So here in this case, we assume we have just these uh, monomials which actually contribute, so which occur in such an equation, and then uh, we have the subdivision into these two uh, integer triangles. So, okay, I just repeat what I had. <clears throat> and now, uh, uh, let's see. Now we will choose, so <clears throat> as I said, the condition that x to the d, y to the d, that x to the zero, y to the zero occur implies that <clears throat> um, among these vertices we, that occur here are actually the ones at the edges, uh, at the extremes of the triangle, and that among the edges that are used in the subdivisions, uh, are also, uh, <clears throat> so that this subdivision of this triangle will also give us a subdivision of the outer edges of uh, the big triangle. So these all occur. And so, <clears throat> so that means the, the edges of delta B are unions of some of these uh, lines connecting uh, uh, these vertices. So now we, let's choose an inner point in each of the, uh, the polygons into which I have divided my triangle. And we connect uh, these inner points in adjacent uh, such uh, polygons, so in adjacent with respect to this subdivision, by lines which are orthogonal to uh, the line connecting them. You know? <clears throat> so note that this, this direction orthogonal to, to this line connecting this edge is precisely the direction into which one of the edges of the tropical curve will go because if there is such an edge connecting them, there will be a tropical, a, a piece of the tropical curve orthogonal to that direction. So if we do this, so we take a point in each of them, in each of these, uh, and we connect them by lines orthogonal to uh, the edges of the subdivision, we will get a graph. And now <clears throat> we have that the, the edges of uh, our original tropical curve, which is zero set of F, have precisely the same directions as the edges of this curve that we got here by the subdivision. And with a bit more of thought, we also see that the incidence of the edges is the same. So here in this, you know, these three uh, edges here meet in this point V2, and these three edges with the same directions meet in one point, and so on. So we find that this curve gamma zero that we get from the subdivision is equal to our original tropical curve gamma, except for the lengths of the edges and the position of the curve in R2. So therefore, this gamma zero describes perfectly the shape of gamma. So if we do this thing and we make the corresponding subdivision, we get our tropical curve gamma, except that it could be stretched in some directions and it could be put anywhere in the plane. Okay, so now we want to squeeze out a little bit more out of this. So we have found this. <clears throat> we want to squeeze out a little bit more information about the shape out of this uh, observation. Namely, <clears throat> we, we want to now get to the balancing condition. So let's concentrate on one of the uh, polygons of the subdivision. Here we take this uh, lower one. So <clears throat> if we just take the difference, uh, so assume we have a1, B1 until uh, EK, BK are the, uh, are the, the vertices of this uh, polygon, uh, say clockwise. So if we take the difference AI, BI minus AI plus one, BI plus one, if I sum them all up, it just means I go once around the triangle. So the, the sum of these vectors must be zero because it's just going once around the triangle. Now we can also uh, define this bi, which is bi minus bi plus one, ai plus one minus ai. This will be an outer normal vector to the triangle. So at each, uh, uh, you know, so this one, uh, this vi will be orthogonal to the, uh, the edge connecting these two points. And in fact, it is just the, the vector connecting the two, uh, vertices turned by 90 degrees. So therefore, 
if we sum up, if we take this vi's and sum them all up, we also get zero because we just go once around the original triangle turned by 90 degrees. Okay, so we get this condition that the sum of these vectors will always be zero. And so we can try to put this in a slightly nicer form. So in this particular case, we see that, for instance, this vector v2 is minus 1, 1, v3 is 1, 1, and v1 is 2 times 0 minus 1, and the sum of these is 0. <coughs> uh, at least I hope, yeah. <coughs> and so we will write this now, this vi write as wi times ui, where ui is a primitive integer vector in the same direction. And wi call the multiplicity of the corresponding edge of the tropical curve. And this is equal to what would co be called the lattice length of uh, of the, the edge of, the, uh, of this uh, uh, polygon. That is, if you go along the edge of the polygon, uh, if you leave out the first one, how many lattice points do you encounter until you get to the end? So it's the same as the number of lattice points on the edge minus one, namely the point you started. With. So this is the lattice length. <coughs> and so um, then, um, so, then we can translate this fact that the sum of the vi is equal to zero into a so-called balancing condition. So for every vertex of our gamma, with, uh, we look at the edges going in the outgoing directions. We can write the outgoing, you know, outgoing from the vertex. We, we look at all of them outgoing from the vertex. We write them as vi equal to wi times ui, where ui is a primitive integer vector and wi we call the multiplicity of the edge, uh, the yeah, multiplicity of the edge or the weight of the edge actually normally. Um, then we have the sum over all the outgoing vectors, uh, wi times ui is equal to zero. That's the balancing, balancing condition of tropical geometry. So in our example, we have these three vectors, v1, v2, and v3. v1 is equal to two times zero minus one, and the other one are these uh, minus one, one, and one, one, and the sum of these is zero. So this is uh, in this picture. <clears throat> and we will assign the weight of the, the edge will be equal to this, uh, to the weight that we have here, the, the lattice length. So for instance, for our curve gamma zero here, corresponding to the subdivision, the weight of this edge is two, because this, uh, this edge of the triangle, the vertical edge of the, this triangle has the lattice length two, and so the same here. So our corresponding tropical curve looks like this. So with two ed one edge going uh, horizontally to minus infinity, one vertical going to minus infinity, but each of them have weight two, and then two going di diagonally up. Okay. So, um, and there's, <clears throat> okay. And so let me just, uh, and so to just finish uh, this off, so the edges of delta D have, um, have the, uh, we, we, we have said that the edges of this triangle are union of the, of the segments, of some of the segments. So thus it follows that gamma zero has an, has an edge which is orthogonal to, to this, uh, this edge here. It has as many edges obviously as there are segments dividing it. But the, <clears throat> the lattice length of each of the edges of delta D is D, so therefore, we get d unbounded edges of gamma or gamma zero in each of the directions minus one zero, which is orthogonal to, uh, to the vertical thing, zero minus one and one one if we count them with weight. So in our particular case, the, you know, the curve has degree two, so the counted with weights, there are two edges in each of the three directions. Okay, so this is, and so this I sum up here what we have found. <coughs> Um, a plane topic curve of degree D is a balanced weighted graph. So balanced means we have this balancing condition and weighted means that edges have weights where we, <coughs> which uh, uh, with edges of rational slopes with D counted with weight unbounded edges in each of the direction minus one, zero, zero minus one, one, one. And at each vet vertex V, they satisfy the balancing condition that the sum I equals uh, one to K wi ui is equal to zero, where the vi are the outgoing edges at v with weight wi and ui is the 
primitive integer vector in the outgoing direction. Okay, so this is the description of plane topical curves. Now, <clears throat> I want to give some uh, kind of elementary applications and analog of a standard result. I want to talk about the genus of tropical curves. So an important invariant of a smooth projective algebraic over, uh, curve over C is the genus. So it equals uh, the number of handles of C. So um, it's also equal to one half the first Betty number of, uh, of C. So <clears throat> for instance, uh, uh, genus zero would be a, a, a sphere, genus one would be a torus, and genus uh, n would be a torus with n handles. <clears throat> and, and in addition, we want to look at the so-called geometric genus. So this is the genus of the normalization. So if the curve is singular, so like here, it has, you know, it has a singular point, then we look at the genus of the, gen the genus of C is the genus of normalization. So we are allowed to pull the singularity apart. So if you pull this apart here, you get, you get something homomorphic to a sphere. So the genus of this is zero, whereas this, this curve has genus one. Okay, so now I want to do the same for plane topical curve. So the genus of a plane topical curve is in some sense similar. Uh, G of gamma is just the, now the dimension is just the first Betty number of, of the tropical curve. I mean, this is gamma. So not one half, but gamma. So the number of independent cycles in gamma. So for instance, if I have a line like this, this has genus zero. If I have this, um, if I have this curve, this cubic curve, this is genus one, because we can see one cycle. And on the other hand, <clears throat> We also want to have something like the normalization. So if, if, the, if a cycle gets closed by intersecting two edges, like here, we think of having kind of pulled them apart a little bit so that it has opened. So this thing would have genus zero. So a, a cycle doesn't count if, uh, if it's uh, done by intersecting edges. Okay. So this would be the genus of a plane topical curve. So it's a standard theorem that if C is a smooth D complex curve in P2, then its genus of degree d, then its uh, genus is d minus one times d minus two divided by two. And if c is singular, the genus is smaller. Okay, so this is a standard re uh, elementary result. <coughs> now we want to see whether similar things hold uh, for tropical curves. So first maybe we should have some idea what it means for a tropical curve to be smooth, because obviously it's not smooth in the obvious sense, it's a, a locally linear graph. So, uh, so, <coughs> So if we, uh, so we make the following maybe slightly ad hoc definition, if V is a trivalent vertex of a plane tropical curve, and we have the corresponding unit outgoing vectors along the edges of V, um, at, at V with weights uh, W1, W2, W3, we pick any two of them of these outgoing uh, vectors. It, because of the balancing condition, what we define is independent of which two we pick. Then the multi Mikalkin multiplicity at V is um, M of V, which is the product of the weights times the absolute value of the determinant of uh, the matrix we get by putting next to each other these two uh, vectors in R2. So this will be, this is a matrix with integer entry. So this will be an integer and we take the absolute value. So it's a positive integer you know, because they are linear independent, it's positive, and then we multiply by this, so we get a positive integer. So in other words, we take the parallelogram spent by the vector w1 times u1 and w2 times u2, and we take its area. This is the Minkai multiplicity. Uh, incidentally, if we look at our uh, decomposition of our uh, triangle delta d into, uh, into polygons, we see that this parallel we, par parallelogram we see here uh, is um, kind of twice the triangle uh, in, in the subdivision corresponding to this vector vertex. So, you know, turned by 90 degrees. So that means the Mikalkin multiplicity of uh, this vertex V is twice the area of the corresponding uh, uh, polygon in the decomposition of delta D into triangles. We will use this in a moment. Okay, so, <clears throat> and now uh, if, if we do, uh, I have said that the uh, Mikalski multiplicity 
is this. So a plane tropical curve, gamma of degree D is called non-singular if it is trivalent. So all vertices are trivalent. And for every vertex V of gamma, we have that the Michalkin multiplicity is one. So the area of this program is one. So a line, it's for instance, non-singular, you can see that this would be a non-singular cubic because if you just look at the angles uh, and there's no, you will find that the Michalkin multiplicity is one. So now we want to show that if gamma is a smooth plane degree D topical curve, um, then its genus is D minus one times D minus two divided by two, the same for a smooth uh, degree D curve in P2 uh, you know, over the complex numbers. And if the curve is singular, its genus is smaller. Actually, we will only prove the first part, uh, but if you look carefully at the proof, you can easily uh, show the second part. I mean, you can easily uh, do it as an exercise. So <clears throat> we write gamma zero to be the number of vertices of our curves, gamma one to be the number of bounded edges of our curve. Then I claim the genus of gamma is after all the number of cycles is one plus gamma one minus gamma zero. I assume the curve is uh, the topic curve is connected. So one plus gamma one minus gamma zero. How does one see this? Maybe you can maybe just see if it, <clears throat> if there's just one edge or something, it's obvious, but you know, and then if we add a cycle to our tropical curve, it means, you know, we, we, we will add a certain number of edges and we add one vertex less. For instance, here, in order to add this cycle, we had to add one vertex and two edges. In order to add this cycle, we have to add uh, three edges and two vertices. And you can easily see this is always true. And so we get uh, this form. Um, furthermore, we see that gamma has 3D unbounded edges because um, <clears throat> the Michalkin multiplicity at every vertex is one. There can be no edges with weights with uh, different from one. Uh, every vertex is trivalent, we have required that, and every bounded edge will connect two vertices. So that means the total number of bounded, the total number of uh, edges, <clears throat> um, let me see. <clears throat> so we have altogether uh, gamma zero vertices. Each of them has three outgoing edges. So from this point of view, there are three times gamma zero edges of which 3D are the unbounded edges, and then there are the bounded edges, which are gamma one, but each of them connects two vertices, so it counts twice. And so we get this formula. And finally, the area of the triangle delta D is D squared halves. We have just seen that the triangle corresponding to each vertex of V has a Michalkin multiplicity one. So the area of the corresponding triangle is one half of that, so it's one half. So we find that the number of vertices is d squared. And so if we just put these three formulas together, you, you immediately see uh, that uh, g of gamma is this number. Okay, so this was, is a very elementary proof of this fact by a simple combinatorial. So now in the, I want to briefly talk about tropical normative geometry, which is what uh, kind of interests me about uh, this subject. <clears throat> so let's talk about enumerative geometry of curves. We want to count curves <clears throat> satisfying uh, suitable conditions. So we want to count curves you know, in some space which satisfies some conditions so that there are only finitely many. For instance, there are applications of, uh, of such questions uh, in, uh, for instance, in string theory in physics, but also in other things also in symplectic geometry. Uh, uh, so uh, let's uh, look at it. <clears throat> so we look just maybe at the curves in P2. So the space of uh, sing, you know, singular curves in P2 of degree D and genus G. So we know if the curve is smooth, then the, the genus is determined by the degree. But if the curve is singular, um, the genus can be smaller. <clears throat> so one can check that in a suitable sense, there is a space of such curves in dimension minus one. If we require such a curve to, to pass through a fixed, to a given point 
in the plane P2, this will cut down the dimension by one. And so if one does this carefully, one finds that if you take 3D plus G minus one general points in P2, there will be finitely many curves of degree D and genus G passing through all of them. And then you could ask yourself, how many are they? That seems an interesting question and it is also somewhat difficult. So what is this number? And so this number is called the severity degree <coughs> because it's the degree of the so-called severity variety, NDG. So it's the number of degree D, G, D, genus G curves in P2 through 3D plus G minus one general points in P2. And one can prove that this number is independent of the choice of the points in P2 as long as the points are sufficiently general. So that they're finally, yeah. so <coughs> for an instance, everybody knows that the N10 is equal to one. There's one line passing through two points. No, you can, uh, uh, <coughs> as long as the two points are not the same, there will be one line connecting. And now, um, so in, um, so these severe degrees are kind of difficult to determine, also if one looks at other uh, spaces than P2. So to, to determine the severe degrees, one uh, uses advanced tools of algebraic geometry. In this particular problem of computing the severe degrees was uh, studied by, um, uh, or, or solved by Caporazzo and Harris. Uh, <clears throat> uh, some, I mean, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. Um, and, but it uses some advanced uh, tools of algebraic geometry to study these uh, spaces parameterizing these curves. We want to instead look at the same problem from the viewpoint of tropical geometry. So instead you want to count tropical curves. For instance, we see, uh, we see at least that through general points in R2, there's a unique tropical line. So if you fix these two points, you know, a tropical line always looks like this, one line going like this, one line going down, one going diagonally. Depending on the relative position of the points, the points will either lie like this, or will lie like this, or they will lie like this, but there's always one tropical line passing through, that, through them. So like in uh, algebraic geometry. So in general, <coughs> if we want to count uh, curves using tropical uh, geometry, we have to count them with some multiplicity and the multiplicity is the one we already defined, the Mikalkin multiplicity. So we recall the definition of the Mikalkin multiplicity. Uh, so if V is a trivalent vertex of a plane uh, tropical curve gamma, and we have these three outgoing vectors, uh, primitive uh, integer vectors outgoing uh, along the edges of V, uh, at V, and with the corresponding weights W1, W1, W2. The Mikalkin multiplicity is W1 times W2 times the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix given by U1 and U2. So, <clears throat> and then if gamma is, uh, is a trivalent tropical curve, so all vertices are trivalent, then the Mikalkin multiplicity of gamma uh, is M of gamma, which is the product over all vertices of gamma of the Mikalkin multiplicity of the vertex. This will always be a positive integer because each Mikalkin multiplicity of each vertex is a positive integer. It can only be one if all Mikalkin multiplicities of each vertex are one, otherwise it's bigger. Okay. And so now we can define the tropical severity degree as uh, by counting uh, the tropical curves uh, through these. Um, <clears throat> so given 3D plus G minus one general points in R2, there are finitely many, so one can prove, there are finitely many degree D genus G tropical curves gamma through all these points, PI, and all these will be trivalent if the curves are sufficiently, are sufficiently general. And the tropical severity degree is then uh, NDG chop, which is the sum over all these curves gamma of the Mikalkin multiplicity of gamma. So gamma runs over all degree D genus G tropical curves to all the points PI. So again, the Mikalkin multiplicity of the curve is the product over all vertices of the Mikalkin multiplicity of the vertex. And now there's a theorem proven by uh, Mikalkin. <coughs> which uh, says that the severity degrees and the tropical severity degrees agree. So the severity degree is equal to the tropical severity degree. 
So this is proven by some kind of degeneration argument. <clears throat> um, I think there's an, another proof also by Siebert and Nishinu in a more algebraic setting. <clears throat> but this means that we can compute these severity degrees by tropical uh, uh, geometry, so by computing the tropical uh, severity degrees, so by just counting these tropical curves. And this is much easier than uh, uh, to do the algebraic geometry and studying these uh, complicated modelized spaces of curves. Okay, so this allows us to do normative geometry of, plane of curves via combinatorics. Now, um, still, maybe I can see a few words more. <clears throat> so I, <clears throat> I wanted to introduce one combinatorial tool to make this task of counting these tropical curves a little bit easier to, so that one can get some kind of feeling. Because I mean, if you imagine you have general points in the plane and you want to count all the tropical curves to them, that might still be not so easy. You have to kind of think how these tro tropical curves can look like. So counting tropical curves is easier than counting complex curves. Still, the combinatorics is complicated. There's a combinatorial tool, which are the floor diagrams, which make the task a bit easier. And I want to briefly introduce this. So we want to count degree D, genus three tropical curves to 3D plus G minus one general points in R2. So now we can, choose the points are supposed to be in general position, but they have to be in general position from the tropical point of view. And from the tropical point of view, they are in general position, even if they all lie on a line with a very small irrational slope and they are stretched out very light, widely along this line. So here you can see this line, here we have these points. And now uh, we look at the tropical curves, say in this case, it's degree two, uh, passing through them. And if uh, in this case that the, the point conditions are like this, gamma will have a very special shape. It has a so-called floor decomposition. I will briefly explain what this is. So <clears throat> it, it is decomposed in some horizontal edges. So here we have, uh, and you know, if we throw away the horizontal edges and we have certain components. The horizontal edges we call escalators because uh, originally one would think of the whole thing turned by 90 degrees and so the escalators go up and uh, the connected components of the, of the rest are called the floors. And the following properties hold. Every floor and every escalator contains precisely one marked point as we can see here. So only the escalator, so the horizontal lines, can have weights different from one. And any vertex has multiplicity, mechanical multiplicity one, unless it's adjacent to an escalator uh, whose multiplicity is, whose weight is not one, in which case the multiplicity of the vertex is the weight of the edge. So one can show that the shape of the curves will be like this. So let's look at this. We look at a tropical curve through a horizontally stretched configuration of points, and we have the associated, uh, and we want to associate to that a so-called floor diagram. So the escalators are the horizontal segments and the floors are the connected components of the complement. So in blue, I have surrounded the floors. <clears throat> so there's one marked point on every floor and one on every escalator. So we put one black vertex for every escalator, more or less at the position of, of the marked point. I mean, at the horizontal along the line of the black uh, of the uh, of the corresponding mark point, and and the white vertex for every floor at the position of the uh, of the mark point along the line of that. So, for instance, to this uh, tropical curve, we get this diagram. So we connect uh, a floor to an escalator if the corresponding uh, in connect a black dot to a white uh, dot if the corresponding floor uh, escalator is connected to the floor. So in this case, the diagram corresponding to this curve is this. And we keep the weights of the escalators. So we have uh, here, we place this tropical curve by this simpler graph. And so, <clears throat> and then to count the tropical curves, we can instead count the floor diagrams. There are some rules which follow from our definition. Every bounded edge contains a black and a white vertex. Every unbounded edge connects to a black vertex. 
I mean, in all, you know, every you know, edge that ends ends with a black word. I mean, which ends in the on the left will end with a black vertex, and every blur, black vertex is connected to two edges: one incoming uh, from the left, and one outgoing to the uh, to the right of the same way. And white vertex, uh, vertices can have several incoming and outgoing edges. So the number of incoming edges is always one bigger than the number of outgoing edges if you count them with weight. So here we have an example of a floor diagram of degree uh, three. So a floor diagram of degree D in genus G, uh, so corresponding to a degree D in G tropical curve has D incoming edges of weight one, no outgoing edges and G cycles. So this is a degree three uh, weight floor diagram of genus one. And so, and then to count the, the tropical curves, you instead count the floor diagrams. And so we get the, the tropical count is just the sum of all floor diagrams of the GD of genus G of the multiplicity of the floor diagram. And this is just the product of all edges of the weight of the edge. And so we apply this to count use floor diagrams to see how we can count uh, degree three of genus zero in the plane. So what is the number of uh, degree three genus zero curves in the plane through eight general points? And so we have to look at all possible floor diagrams. If you think of it a moment, there are three different ways how the floor diagram can look like. Either we can have first two edges come together in a white vertex, and then this will afterwards join with a, another white one, and then it goes like this. And now, how many different pos possibilities are of this? So the different floor diagrams <coughs> correspond to the different ways how these points can be distributed along the line where, uh, where, they, where they, they, they mark, uh, where the points which was supposed to go. So this, or the fourth, or the fifth. So there are five positions for P. So this curve counts as five. Calcium plus multiplicity is one because all edges have multiplicity one. So these are five curves. Then we can look at this case. First, three edges come together, and then it splits up into two branches like this. Now one should, Remember that here I've written one of them up and one of them down, but they are undistinguishable. So the, 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 the possible cases is how are these two points divided between uh, these two things? So I have to divide these four positions into, into two uh, parts with two. And so there are three possibilities. Either uh, the points five and six are on the first and uh, seven and eight are on the second and so on. There are these three. So this counts for three. And the final possibility is that first all three come together, but then we have an, an edge of weight two going out and then uh, going on. And then uh, it uh, finishes like this with an edge of weight one. And so in this case, we see we have two edges of weight two. And so the mechanic multiplicity is two times two is equal to four. But here, in this case, we have no choice how the points can be. They are all kind of lined up. So uh, therefore, we have one possible curve. It counts with multiplicity four. So this counts for four. So the total number is five plus three plus four is equal to 12. And so this is also a classical result by uh, you know, going back to the beginning of the 19th century that this number is indeed 12. So, <laughs> so that we found here. OK, that was all I wanted to say. Maybe here's the, the list of references, uh, which you uh, can then consult if you want to know more. OK, thank you. That was all I wanted to say. Very nice, Lothar. Mm -hmm. Very nice lecture. Uh, should we open a little bit for questions, Claudio, or should we finish the video first? I cannot resist, Lothar, but uh, ask you perhaps two questions before we finish. Uh, first one is that uh, I noticed in the first slides that this was motivated by a Brazilian scientist, a computer scientist, right? So do you know what was his original motivation for studying this variation of the algebra where the 
The sum is changed by the max and the multiplication is changed by the sum. And how, how do people came up with the... Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 unfortunately, I don't know. I didn't study it, so I, I cannot tell. I mean, the thing is, he studied this algebra and uh, it was some question in maybe theoretical computer science that he, uh, but I, you know, I mean, the reference I've put here, so... <laughs> <laughs> but and, and this was this was around what time in the 80s yeah yeah that was in the 80s yeah so tropical geometry is relatively new yeah very nice but, yeah and um, yeah and so so there is if you look at the internet you can also find a little movie which unfortunately is almost free of mathematical content of some kind of self advertisement of the economy department of Oxford, where he, where some economics professor uh, tells how he uses tropical geometry to design auctions, but it, but he doesn't actually explain anything. He just uh, very proudly says that he uses such modern tools as uh, tropical geometry. So uh, there might be another movie somewhere where more details are given. But anyway, very nice. Mm. And the other curiosity that I had uh, in listening to your talk was how how fast, I mean, the, 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 the last computation that you showed for giving a number of points in genetic position and computing the curves with the given genes and, and degree, uh, how does this grow computationally? You know, if I give you a big number, is this computationally feasible or do things grow really fast to, to calculate these floor diagrams? Um, I mean, you, if you organize carefully what you're doing, it leads to a recursive to recursion formula. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of programmed this recursion and maybe you can easily uh, with the computer if you are willing to wait uh, maybe a couple of hours compute maybe until everything until be 40 or 50 or something. So, uh, you know, these are huge numbers, but you can, uh, uh, it's quite, quite suitable for computation. Um, I mean, also on the laptop. I mean, I've... Um, I mean, there is this Caporazzo Harris gives some kind of recursion formula, and you can prove the same recursion formula using tropical geometry. But this was completely, say, inaccessible before this analogy between the tropical. No, no, no. no. The original proof here by Caporazzo and Harris is using algebraic geometry. Uh, so they use some deformation theory and so on, and they also have these. They also get some strange multiplicity, which come from some deformation theory. But in, in the tropical geometry, they actually come from this Nikalkin multiplicity, so they are much easier to understand. And it's a quite difficult paper, but you can do it um, <clears throat> with the tropical geometry. But tropical geometry has also other applications. So if it was just to reprove this, this would maybe be so bad. Um, one thing is, for instance, um, I didn't have time to mention that you can also count real curves. So if you want to know how many of these curves are real, there's a so-called uh, change invariance, which count the real curves with certain signs and gives some therefore lower bounds for the actual number of real curves. And you can, using top, you can show that these can also be computed using tropical geometry. And this gives a very similar recursion formula for, for the real curve. And so that's, uh, that's something which was, I think, not known uh, before like that. So that comes from the tropical geometry. And uh, anyway. Very nice. Claudio, anything you want to add or comment as of now? Yes, no, I, I had a curiosity more very, very, very I mean, very basic, but um, you are kind of almost answered now, but I mean, passing from the complex number, I mean, the theorems that you are connecting between the classical algebraic geometry and tropical geometry seems to connect between complex algebraic geometry to to this very strange uh, uh, structure of the real numbers, yeah. which, which is for, for, a, for, a, for a foreign ma a mathematician is very strange. Uh, I mean, yeah. what's, is it possible to, to, to say something about I mean, why does it work? Yeah, I mean, I mean, so at least I can give some kind of, uh, I, I was, if I had more time, I would have explained, tried to say more in my lecture because, so you can, the connection, I mean, at least in the Nikalkin point of view, comes from uh, what they call amoebas. So if you have, um, say, a complex, so assume we are in the, in the plane, so you have a, a complex curve. So then you take the, the logarithm of 
so you have f is a polynomial, you take the logarithm of the, logarithm of the absolute value of f. If you look at uh, the, um, if you look what you get here, it will be a so-called amoeba. So it's a certain form which some kind of tentacles going to infinity in the same directions. Now, if you, you know, if you kind of let the base of the logarithm go to infinity, this, this thing becomes thinner and thinner and the final limit is a tropical curve. And so you can somehow see that uh, going from the, uh, I mean, that's at least some motivation that going from the algebraic geometry to the complex geometry is a, can be viewed as a limit process. That's one way of seeing it. There's also an, an algebraic way, which is uh, quite different, which is uh, via, um, you know, working, if, if instead of working over the complex number, you work over the field of Peugeot series, so power series with possibly rational coefficients, then you can define what is called a tropicalization. tropicalization. So if you have a zero set of some polynomial yeah. in this thing, you can um, somehow, and I don't remember precisely uh, how it goes, but uh, you, uh, you just remember the, the valuation of the corresponding terms with, you know, the variation is me, which power of the variable, uh, you know, so field of Peugeot series means you have K of, uh, 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 X to the one over N for all possible values of N. Uh, so the, all of these added. And so uh, the valuation of uh, X to the one over N is maybe one over N. And so you, uh, if you now <clears throat> uh, have a, a, a usual polynomial, you can take the tropicalization of it, which means you just keep kind of the, in, in a suitable sense, the leading term of everything, you know, just the valuations of the leading term. And this will give you, uh, uh, will associate uh, to, uh, <coughs> so this, this gives you some number. And now you can somehow see that if you take all the points on the corresponding complex curve and take their valuation. I mean, not the com the, com the field the the over the the curve over the field of Fizier series. You take the variation the, the variation in the in the two variables. Say, um, then so each of these points will give you a, a point in the in the real plane. So the you know actually with rational coordinates, and so you if you just look at those, you get some kind of image. If you now take the closure of that in the plane, this will be the tropical curve associated to the thing. So it's just a set of all valuations uh, of, of the points on the curve, uh, you know, however closed up so that it's actually uh, something. Again, you have this limit procedure. So that's another way how you can get the tropical curve from the curve over, over you know, in algebraic geometry. And I mean, the, yeah, anyway. And there's, uh, this is very close to another description in terms of uh, what you call Berkovich spaces, which, uh, you know, maybe I don't want to. <laughs> uh. well, very nice. Thank so let's, uh, let's thank Lothar again mm -hmm. for giving this very brilliant, uh, very nice lecture. And yeah. I think where we wrap up our presentation today. Thank you very much, Lothar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye.